Drum roll, please. Hey, guys. Welcome to another episode of the Brokerpreneur Podcast. I am Dr. Ben. Today, I'm the farmer of flow. The farmer? You don't even talk about chickens and eggs. Ah, I got you. I was and, thinking uh, farmer like Jeff Farmer. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And, and, and I'm here with the big guy, as usual. Yep. Uh, the foghorn leghorn of recruiting. <laughs> I'm that little chicken hawk. <laughs> oh, you're the little chicken hawk that's like, let me at him. Yeah, okay, they, yeah they, that chicken hawk, man, he was too he was big for else. his britches. I'm more like the chicken hawk, but not not aggressive. <laughs> right, you're just, you know, that, that's it. You know, you're like here, and I'm like this little guy. Down there. But uh, how's it going, Matt? I I'm say, doing... I say, I say. <laughs> <laughs> I say, how you doing, boy? <laughs> I don't know that I've seen a foghorn leghorn cartoon in, in 15 years. I know, right? And my boys used to watch Looney Tunes and stuff like that, but I don't know. This probably, you know, probably got canceled. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, so yeah. we apologize. Yep. I'm sorry if we brought back bad memories of good cartoons. Yep, exactly. What are we talking about today, Matt? Uh, so this is where the whole egg thing comes in, right? Yep. So we're so we're talking about, uh, you know, selling versus recruiting because we know a lot of our brokers, yep. right, uh, uh, have to do both. Uh, so which comes first, the chicken or the egg, right? Yeah. So, so we're gonna that's what that's what we're gonna dig into today. We're gonna pay a little bit of attention to how to make the decision of whether you should be spending your time selling or whether you should be spending your time recruiting. Yeah. So guys, you know, before we dig into this, you know the routine. Uh, wherever you listen to this, hit that follow and that subscribe button. Go go to brokerpreneurpodcast dot com. Check out all the cool stuff that we have there. Um, Take a sneak peek at our new brokerpreneur fast track. Uh, we're super proud of that. We, 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 you know, we're getting rave reviews from all the the brokerpreneurs out there. Yep. Um, who who are joining and uh, and meeting with us every single day, should they choose, right? And um, to, to to talk about how to grow their brokerage. Yeah, because, all the different aspects of what they need to focus on from a growth perspective. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly right. Let's close so, some gaps, man. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, um, you know, selling, recruiting, right? Like. It's just like anything else, right? You have to start with a with a clear vision. Mm-hmm. You have to start. You have to start with a goal, right? right? Absolutely. Yeah, and a goal has a goal has always got a timeline, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay, it's not so, a goal if you don't. That's exactly right. So, uh, uh, so that I think that's probably the first thing I would I would look at, right? In my setup, do I have a timeline of when I want to accomplish what? Okay, yeah. we're going to talk a little bit more about owning a brokerage and not being a person that recruits or owning a brokerage and being a person that, that, you know, uh, you know, uh, only sells. Right. Okay. Yes. We're gonna, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let me, let me give, let me give a little bit of perspective on this. Cause I don't know if I've, I don't know if I've ever went this much into this. Right. So, okay. Oh, so I was a competing broker. I was a non-competing broker. Right. Okay. So I did not sell any real estate other than my personal real estate for probably 20 years. Right. Okay. Now I oversaw offices that were doing thousands of transactions. Of course. Okay. So, uh, so, you know, there was a, uh, you know, I had an understanding of the transactional process, but I was just never in there doing that day in and day out. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's hard, right? Oh, no doubt. Okay. So, so, so we know that with that being said, the, my entire job was how productive are my agents? Yeah. And did I and did I stay above a certain line with with a net number of agents doing a net number of business? Okay, yeah. so so my job was always to get more of the right people and get them more productive. Period. Even yeah. when I oversaw other offices and all that kind of stuff, right? And other managers, you know, reported to me and everything. That that was all about is everybody being as productive as possible. Yeah. Right. So. Uh, so when, when a manager talks about, you know, how difficult it is to sell and to recruit completely get that not being dismissive of that in any way, shape or form. Absolutely. Okay. Being a competing broker is difficult. Being a non-competing broker is difficult. Yes. Being a non-competing broker, which I, I saw this happen. I can't tell you how many times you're in one manager's meeting and there's a whole bunch of people in there and you're in the next manager's meeting. And some of the people that you knew that you've known for a while are no longer there. Yeah, because their office wasn't productive. It's no shock. I mean, you look around and yeah. right. They're not doing the business. They're not making the numbers. They're not. Hit, OK. Yep. And I'm sure nobody walked in one day and just said, oh, you know, Billy Bob, you're you're fired. That's not the way that goes. No, right? of course not. But but the truth is, if you can't help make people more productive, if you can't hire people, you don't get to stay. Yeah. OK. Yeah, it's like do your job. 
That's exactly right. Right. And so sometimes the person's job keeping the doors open is, uh, is a, is doing some sales Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's recruiting and retention and all that kind of stuff. Okay. I I completely, I I completely get that. We focus on the side of it that is actually going to give the broker the lifestyle that they, I think they truly want. Yes. Okay. So, you know, with, with being a competing broker, when you take your foot off the gas, your car slows down. Yes. Okay. That means your revenue slows down everything else. We yep. try to convince brokers all the time to not be in that position. Yeah. It's, it's terrifying. Absolutely. And that doesn't mean that you have to be non-competing. Yeah. Okay. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a, a little bit more about that in just a second. So I think the, the first one talking about the goals, I had to say all that first, right? So, yeah. uh, but the first one of having a goal is your goal to get out of production or is your goal to create a system where you can produce what you want and you have other people managing that system? Yeah. Okay. So take a close look at that first. Do you always want to be selling? If so, that's fantastic. But I don't want you to always have to sell. There's a big difference between the two of those. And I think the first thing a broker has to do if they're really trying to make a decision between should I spend my time selling or should I spend my time recruiting, they have to take a close look at their goal first and go, you know what, that's where I want to be. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me let me tell you one other thing that, that will impact this. Okay. And this okay. is this is the one that, that, that hurts my feelings when I talk to people and they don't hear it. Okay. You have feelings? I, I do have feelings. Okay. I, I hate pe- I hate seeing people fail whenever I'm I'm right here to help them not fail. Oh yeah. So uh, so the uh, if you ever want to sell your business, it better be more than just you. Oh yeah, you got that right. If you're the number one producer in your office, you don't get to sell it. Right. Nobody wants to buy your job. That's yeah. not the way that that's not the way that works. Yeah. So so they know that as soon as they buy and get take whatever it is from you, if you decide to slow down at all, they're not going to make their money, which means you're not going to get your earn out. Yeah. OK. <clears throat> Everybody knows that. Yep. So so if you ever want to get to the point where you can slow down and sell something that you've built, then what you've built can't just be you. Yeah. Yeah. What are the Chicago Bulls worth today? Versus right. the mid nineties. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And dollars were different then. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that's a, it's all about the goals. You know, what is your goal? What is it you're trying to accomplish? Do you want to sell down the road? Do you want to just, you know, are you going to one day just say, Hey, I've had enough, you know, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to close the doors today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, and all that hard work for nothing. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, let me tell you a real, a a very real story and I'll try to leave names out of this and I'm going to try to skew it a little bit so that it's not very obvious who it is. You can use Looney Tune names. Okay. So, uh, so there was a, uh, very productive agent that had been in a, in a, uh, in a market for a very long time. Okay. Okay. And shortly after me starting to manage her, I was like, okay, so, uh, and, and when I say manage, just keep in mind, I mean, guide, right? I'm not. I never went in and was like, I was your manager. You go in and do what the hell I want. Right. That's just yeah. not how I roll. Yeah. So, uh, so I went in after st- taking over managing and I'm like, Hey, what are you going to do? Cause, cause she was no spring chicken. Right. 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 <laughs> okay. And, and, uh, I said, Hey, what are you going to do when we get to, when we get to this point? And, uh, you know, when you want to retire, slow down and everything. Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm just, I'm, you know, going to be done. Right. I said, okay. I said, well, here's what, here's what I want. I, I want you to be able to stop on your terms. Yeah. Okay. I don't want you to, to stop on someone else's terms. Yeah. And their response was, Oh, don't you worry about that. I'll stop on my terms. Okay. Yeah, of course. Constantly every three to six months, I would talk to this person about this. Yeah. Okay. Probably three, four five years goes by some, some life events happen yep. right with, with, with her and still, still very productive. However, market market share starts to slip. Doesn't yeah. have the doesn't have the same relationship with the market that they had before. Yeah. Okay. And and I ask, I said, uh, "Hey, do you want to do you want to do something different about this?" And and the response was no longer, "Oh, uh, I, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close the door one day and be done, right? I'm just gonna stop selling." Yeah. The, re, the response was no longer that. The response was. Well, I'm not sure what I'm going to do because this person and this person aren't doing this the right way. Yeah. Meaning that other people in the market that were taking market share now were somehow not as good for the consumer as she was. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
the truth was that was true. They were not as good. She she just knew like so much about. Oh okay? yeah, yeah. However, the consumer had gotten to the point where they didn't care so much about that. So her having a legacy plan of moving on, the time waned of her having that to be able to be in charge of that legacy plan. Yeah. My reason for telling this whole story is for any broker out there that thinks they have plenty of time to create a legacy plan or that one day they're just going to say, yeah, I'm just going to do this with my brokerage or yeah, I'm going to do that with my brokerage. The truth is if you don't have a plan, if you don't have a system, if you don't have things in place, the market will adjust how effective you are and what you have left will be based on how hard you were willing to work and what the circumstances of how well you kept up with things in order to be able to say, this is the valuation of this. Yeah. Okay. So I know, I know I said that very cryptic and very complicated. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little bit about the story. Is, of there, course. is there stuff that we need to, is there something else I need to say that I can say in a way that, uh, that that's going to help the audience understand how to not make this mistake and, and set that goal? Yeah. No, I just, I just think it's one of those things, guys. It's like, <clears throat> excuse me. It's like any, it's like anything else. You know, we, we, and, and you brought this the other day, you know, in a book that you're reading, um, you know, it's the map versus the terrain. Yep. Yep. We can all look at a piece of paper and say, okay, you know, here's where I am. And, and, and we all know that it's fun to get the calculator out and say, well, if I add this many agents or I do this many transactions at this percentage and all this kind of stuff, yep. then man, look at all the money I could make, right. <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It, you know, your exit strategy, if we want to, you know, if we just call it that your exit strategy, you can look at it the same way and, you know, do all these dream filled numbers of, okay, if I just reach this, you know, then that day I'm going to put a for sale sign on my business door and this is what's going to happen. And everybody's just going to come by and say, yeah, right. yeah, I want it. But that's the map, right? Right. The terrain is okay. I know how to get, you know, from here to Oregon, but yeah, I don't really know how to uh, traverse the Rocky mountains. Right. <laughs> right. That's exactly that, right. That, 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 that's what we're, that's what, what we're, supplies do I need to get over the, the mountains? Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. And once I get up there and it's, you I've know, got I'm, the path, how do I, I keep my, my horse warm? How do you know? I got flip flops on. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, I started in yeah. Florida. Right. What? These don't work. So, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's what we're talking about here yep. is, you know where you are. A lot of you have a really good idea or, you know, you may, may be like uh, the lady in the example, like, oh, don't you worry. I got this. I got this. I'm close. You know, she, you know, she had a plan right in her head. Right. She had a map. Was, things were going to go exactly the way she wanted until she was ready to quit. Yeah. She didn't account for the things along the way, the, yeah. the terrain. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. So, um, Let's let you know. So uh, again, let's let, let's let's go to the next one, which is kind of like pick your poison. Yep. Right. You know, uh, selling and recruiting, uh, choosing choosing your stress. Yeah. So which uh, which one stresses you out more? Okay. And and so this one this one has to be in here, but it doesn't have to be in here because people aren't already choosing. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. yeah. <laughs> they're yeah. already choosing. <laughs> yeah, and and there are different levels of this too, right? Oh yeah. It's uh, uh which one of these is causing you stress right now? Right. Uh, but which one, uh, if it's not done, it's going to cause more stress. It's going to cause more stress later. Right. You say it all the time. Uh, can't be easy, easy, uh, yeah. right? It's going to be hard now and easy later or easy now and hard later or something it's like that. It's up to you, man. Yeah. Which one is it that you want? Hard now, easy later. Yeah. Or easy now, hard later. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, and so, uh, so, you know, uh, you got to choose your stress. Okay. And when I say that, so you can transition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. You can say, look, I really love selling. It's easy. Everybody loves me. I connect with people. Well, all that kind of stuff. I hate picking up the phone and cold calling people from recruiting. So I'm just going to do more sales. When I say choose your stress, what I mean is absolutely keep selling, but don't recruit by picking up the phone and doing something you hate. Yeah. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Can you figure out a way close to how you're succeeding with your real estate sales to recruit the same way. The yeah. answer is hell to the yes. All yeah. you have to do is come to the class and sit in there and listen <laughs> yeah. to what we're telling you <laughs> yeah. and, and just do that. Right. Okay. But that, that, so let's don't get into that. What is it that worries you? What is it that stresses you out? What is it that concerns you? What is it that keeps you up at night? Yeah. Is there some way of, instead of just diving off the cliff doing that, that you can take a little bit of pressure from here and put it over there to start making that shift? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me give you a very real life example because, of course, that's what I love to do. Yep. All right. Fake life. uh, A fake life example. That's right. A fake life example. (laughs) 
Hey guys, this episode of the Brokerpreneur Podcast is brought to you by the Speculo Group. The Speculo Group is the turnkey solution for agent and brokerage lead generation. With a focus on generating the highest quality leads from platforms like Google, YouTube, Facebook, and more, the Speculo Group is your one-stop shop to dominating your local market and beyond. Visit their website for more information at thespeculogroup.com. So, uh, so let's say that, uh, so let's say that I'm great at sales Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I don't mind recruiting and having conversations. Once the person sits down with me, I feel that I'm really comfortable with that. Okay. Yeah. I think probably 80% of our listeners would say that. Yeah. Yeah. I agree with that. Okay. They would probably say, Hey, I'm, I'm really good at, you know, I'm, I know how to sell. I've had great conversations with my clients and my customers. And when I sit down with a recruit, especially a recruit, if they came to me, that's a referral from someone else, I just have a really good, it's real easy to have those conversations with them. Choose your stress means that that part about setting that appointment and getting that person to the interview, that is the most stressful part for you. That is the part that you need to figure out a way of how to, how to lead into that so that you're not getting too stressed out about that. Yeah. Right. Does that mean that you have someone else help you set that, set that appointment? Okay. Yeah. So be careful with that. You know, sometimes, you know, if the appointment isn't set the right way, there's not the right expectations. It actually becomes more stressful later. Right. Yep. But don't pressure yourself on how many appointments you have to set. Yep. Don't pressure yourself on the way that you have to set those. Pick what you want to be stressed about. Isolate that and work <clears> on that piece first. And what's going to happen is you're going to figure out exactly why you hate it. Yep. So many times the reason why people don't like that part is because they're no good at that conversation. Yep. Okay. They're not, they're, they don't have the right dialogue. They don't have the right understanding. They don't have the right tools or, or whatever. Right. So, or they're just doing it at the wrong time. Oh, absolutely. You see what I, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Cause it's like, uh, Oh, I got five minutes. Right. Absolutely. All right. Let me just hop into this really quick. Oh, this doesn't work. Right. Or at nine 30 in the morning, which this is great. If you can set up a time and do that and be consistent from nine 30 to ten thirty, this is what I'm going to do. Well, you know what half of the other productive agents are doing from nine 30 until ten thirty in the morning. Yeah. Same thing you are. Are you freaking kidding me that you're literally going to inter- interrupt their time that they're making connections with other people just because it's convenient for you, for you to do that same thing. Yeah. Okay. So, so 100%, if that's when you have the best energy, if that's when you have the, the best mindset, if the rest of your day is slam busy, then yeah, that's when you have to do it. Yeah. Okay. But if you, if you're stressed out about that and you're having a hard time with that, maybe do it at, at six o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Oh, maybe, absolutely. Maybe do it. At, you know. Okay. So, so maybe do it a little bit early in the morning. You have to figure out what your stress is, and then you have to reduce that stress to the least amount. If you're somebody that appreciates a schedule and knows that you have to get things done with your when your energy is a certain time, yeah. Then it doesn't matter whether they're calling out at that point or not. Yeah, absolutely. You have to call then. Yeah. That's you knowing you. And you choosing when you're going to be stressed and minimizing that choice as much as possible until you get in the habit of doing it. Yeah. And you say this and you say this all the time. You know, I feel like that's my line in this podcast. Some reason. You say this, Matt. You say that. Right, I'm right, just, right. I listen to you too much, I guess. Uh, uh, but you have to think about, okay, you know, because, because I want everybody when they're making this plan, whenever you're like, okay, this is the time that I'm picking, right? 930, 1030 or whatever. It's the same thing with like marketing, right? This is yep. just marketing. You know, take a look at your target audience. Yep. When is it that they are most open Absolutely. to receiving a phone call? Absolutely. Um, you know, maybe it's the best time you can do it. Maybe it's not the best time you can do it. But then you start saying like, well, how bad do I want it? Mm-hmm. And, you know, maybe it's from five to six. Maybe it's from six to seven at night. Right. Like, like, like who knows? But, um, uh, test that, test that, Absolutely. and test that in your market. You know, if you if you do a couple of weeks from nine thirty to ten thirty, it doesn't work. Be like, well, you know what? I'm just going to try it from one to two today, or twelve to one, or you know, six to seven, like right. like I was saying, um, and and find find something that um, that is conducive to the agent. Because as soon as you find that window, and everybody's like, hey, how's it going? Now all of a sudden, it's just not as bad as it right. se- as it seemed You're like it was stressed. when everybody was like leave me alone right now it's like hey how's how's it how's it going um i'm i'm learning and, and this like this like a two or three day thing right i haven't even told matt about this i'm, I'm unleashing this on the podcast oh here we go um hold on i, I found um uh, my my great grandfather's harmonica oh nice right in a box and i was like 
I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. Like, you know, if I was like, I could learn how to play like my great grandfather's harmonica. Yeah, I had to sterilize it first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? You know, what animals are in there? But, uh, but it was just, you know, really cool old harmonica and it still worked. And it still, Grandpa you know, could have been frisky too. There's no telling what's yeah, in yeah, that harmonica. Yeah, you have no idea, right? right. You know, so um, it was red. <laughs> that tells you something. <laughs> how many red harmonicas have you seen? But, uh, I was reading, so I, I was reading this uh, thing online, you mm-hmm. know, about how to learn how to play blues harmonica. You know, I love the blues, and uh, and it said you're much better off instead of like every two or three months practicing for hours. You're much better off, you know, if you're in your car, you know, and you just say, you know, what, every time, every time I park my car at work or I park my car at home, before I get out of the car, I'm going to get my harmonica out and I'm going to play for three minutes. Right. You're much better off to have that consistency oh, day absolutely. after day after day of absolutely. just a few minutes of playing it yep. than if you were to take all that time and combine it into one practice session, you know, right. once, once a month. Right. And, and, and that, and that goes right along with what we're, what we were just absolutely. talking about, you know, find, find that window. We say maybe it's an hour, but gosh, man, if it's 20 minutes, it doesn't have to be an hour. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an hour. Gosh, if it's just like 20 minutes. You say, you know what? For 20 minutes at, in, in this window, I seem to get a lot of, hey, how's it going? It's more than a, hey, don't call me ever again. Absolutely. Yeah, 10, 10 15, 20, whatever you can do. 20 will turn into an hour if you're, if you're succeeding. Yeah. But, uh, you know, just the consistency and execution. Absolutely. So that brings us into to, to number three of four, Matt. Yep. And that is, you know, which one's the best use of your time? Absolutely. So whenever we talk about best use of time, what do most people think? Which one am I going to make the most money from? Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's hard to argue with. Yeah. Oh, for okay, sure. But yeah. that's definitely the first thing to go. Right. I mean, to, to look at. Absolutely. So, so you look at that, you know, how much money am I making? But what is the residual from that as well? Yeah. Okay. So selling, you're going to get the money, you're going to put it in the account and then you got to start all over. Yeah. Three to five years, you know, you, you stand in touch with that person. Maybe they sell again or, you know, maybe right. they give you a referral or something like that, but that's it's right. not month after month. Absolutely. An agent that's recruited, <clears throat> you're going to, you're going to have to maintain it. Of okay? course. But an agent that's recruited at that point, you know, there's the opportunity to continue earning off of that and, and, and for it to compound. Right. Yep. But are you in a situation that you can't afford because what you're going to make off of the commission of the sale is exponentially less than what you're going to make off of off of an agent? So how many yep. agents do I need in yep. order to make up the same amount for that for that sale? Right. That's where that leverage comes in where you're like, okay, I'm going to, I need, you know, 10 agents that I'm getting this much and doing that much with, and then I can, you know, slow down. So I only have to do this many transactions. So one of the, so, uh, you know, so uh, uh, a broker that I worked with that super smart broker, really great at what, uh, really great at what she did. Uh, We took a look at, at, at how much time she was spending on what type of transactions. okay? Okay. She loved to sell. Okay. She liked being in the, she liked being out there in the trenches. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, and I knew she was never going to be somebody that was just like, you know, I'm going to recruit and run my brokerage and I'm not going to sell. I knew she was never going to be that person. Right. Yeah. And I said, okay, so here is our goal. What our goal is, is anything that is under this price point, you're going to refer to someone. Yeah. Anything that is over this price point, you get to continue working on, you're going to work on that. that, but we're going to do it at this time period. Okay. So for the next six months or a year, there's, there's two things that we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to start, you know, tracking who's in our database, who's, who's buying and paying, you know, how much for what house and all that kind of stuff. And then, uh, and then we're going to, and we're going to build up our recruits and get them to a certain point because now if I can build the recruit up and, uh, and, and I can take some of that business that I'm not going to work anymore yeah, and I'm going to hand it to them. And they're going to pay a referral fee or their split or whatever it is, right? Yep. I'm still going to do pretty well off of that, uh, being the broker, being the company owner, being whatever it is, right? I'm still going to do pretty well off of that. That's going to help them earn at a certain level. And then I get to pay attention to those other clients in a whole different way. Yeah. Now, all of that took planning. Of course. And there was some teeth pulling, some eye teeth pulling (laughs) on on some of that, okay? Just us deciding where that dollar amount was. Just us deciding where that line in the sand was. It took a lot to get to that point. Some people I can't ever get to that point with them to say, hey, listen, uh, you, you need to give up this piece of business. Okay? okay. This is the best way to look at it. I'm going to use the Tampa market. Okay. okay. I'm going to assume everybody knows how big the Tampa market is. Yeah. 
Tampa is on, uh, you know, we live on the little peninsula that's on the peninsula of Florida. Right. Right. Okay. So, so Tampa is, is part of that peninsula and it goes over into the, you know, it goes over into, you know, over into Florida a little bit and everything and uh, all that kind of stuff. If you've got an agent that whenever they're first starting out, somebody wants to buy something two counties away, which is an hour and 30 minutes away. Yeah. Man, you're going to be hard pressed to convince, no matter what the price point is, you're going to be hard pressed to convince that agent not to drive and go do that. Right. Yeah. They're going to be like, man, there ain't no way I'm referring this out to somebody. Okay. After they get to a certain point of exhaustion. Yep. After they get to a certain point of getting burned a certain number of times and all that kind of stuff. At that point, they're going to go, you know what? I'm going to refer this. And there's a chance that that's not going to work out the same or at all. And I probably could have converted this, but there's a chance it's not going to work out. But my time is now worth more than that risk. Yeah. That the, the potential of my time outweighs the, the certainty of that risk. Yeah. Okay. The same thing happens in recruiting and, and selling. Absolutely. Okay. You just have to get to that point where you're like, okay, I'm not going to run all around Tampa Bay. I'm not going to run an hour and a half all over the place in order to, in order to, to, you know, do this with this, with this house. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to have someone else help leverage that for me. Yeah. And so that's whenever we take a, a super close look at our time and we make sure that we're paying attention to it so that we understand that we're not wasting that time. Yep. Absolutely. So that brings us to our last one. <clears throat> Big guy. Yep. Foghorn leghorn. Nah. It doesn't have to be you, but it does have to be your plan. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, so whenever I say it has to be your plan, that doesn't mean that you have to come up with everything yourself. Yes. Of Let's course. start with that. Yep. Right. Uh, what I mean by it does have to be your plan is you should be able to plug into any phase of it and still look and feel like you're in charge. Yeah. You, you can't come along and it look like somebody else has done everything else. You look foolish whenever you do that. Absolutely. And it makes people not trust you as their leader and, and you're just screwed if that happens. Yeah. And nobody ever wants to hear like, well, I could have, you know, I could have succeeded this way if somebody else would have done some, you know, right, like right. Yeah. you don't want to be that person. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so it's, it's gotta be your plan. So take pieces of what works and everything. That's, I believe every recruiting plan is a little bit distinct. Yep. Okay. And, and especially ones that succeed. I yep. think the more, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the more, uh, the same they are, the less likely they are to work. <laughs> yes. Right? Agreed. So, uh, so especially in the same market, absolutely trying to copy somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So ridiculous. All right. So anyway, uh, so, uh, so it's gotta be your plan, right? Yep. Okay. Oh, but it doesn't have to be you. Yep. There's components of your plan. Like we just talked about, like, like making those connections. Let me, let me, let me throw something out there. I, I would be willing to bet that three quarters of our of our listeners have a staff member that would not mind reaching out to co-ops and saying, sure. Hey Ben, you know, Ben really appreciates you, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, working with us in the co-op with Betty Sue, you know, we'd love to tell you a little bit about what we do. We want to stay in touch and make sure that, you know, we've got a great relationship because we want to keep selling each other's properties. Yep. But, uh, but you know, we'd love to sit down and talk to you sometime about what it is that we do. Is that, yeah. you know, can we, can we do that? Yeah. How easy is that? I bet you have a staff member. Most of you have a staff member. That would be excited to do that, especially if let's just say they were incentivized by fifty or a hundred dollars <coughs> on that person's first transaction whenever yep. they whenever they came in, provided they're licensed appropriately to be able to do it and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. So, so you might have a staff member that's like, yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. I'd love to give that a shot, and they suck at it, yeah. right? They're just they're just terrible at it to begin with. Yeah. Well, so are you. And right, <laughs> if you're not possibly, doing it, you're even worse. Yeah, that's exactly right. So, so there's possibly yep. a, a pl- the place that they're starting. There's no, uh, you have no idea where they'll end up. Yeah. A staff member that's willing to do this is a oh, huge yeah. win. Oh, for sure. How many new agents have you had? And you're like, I don't know if they're ever going to do anything. And then right. it's like, you know, they sell like $30 million in properties that year. Right. Right. And then other ones that have an incredible sphere of influence and whatever. And you're like, man, they're going to kill it. And right. Yeah. So you just don't know. Right. Yep, that's right. So, so you probably have a staff member that, that will do that. You might have a family member that would do that. No, oh, for sure. You might have uh, a nephew that is that is 22 years old that's looking to to make a little bit of money, and you can have him come in and call down a list, and he's going to stumble through it and just figure it out. And the next thing you know, he's setting, he's doing that one piece that stresses you out, and then you're getting to be that person that sells all those houses you want, and then gets to have that appointment whenever you sit down. But that other piece is being done by somebody else. Yeah, and your nephew's like, man, un- uncle. Uncle, whatever, he's the best. Right. Right. Like, this is the easiest thing I've ever done. Absolutely. 
Yeah. yeah, you just you just don't know how you're going to win at that, yep. and and it's until you until you try. But if the appointment is the part that stresses you out, then maybe you have an agent in your office or a staff member in your office that actually does the interview side of that while you're setting the appointment because you don't mind doing that. So whatever stresses you out, take a look at that. Understand that it, that it doesn't have to be you that does every bit of it, but it does have to be your plan. Yep, absolutely. Guys, wherever you're listening to this, whether it be iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Deezer, and those platforms, make sure to hit that follow button. If you're watching us on YouTube, hey, what's up? Hit that red subscribe button, that bell right beside it, get notified every time we drop a new episode. Matt, we do these podcasts for one reason, one reason alone. Tell them why that is. Because we want to be part of their Foghorn Leghorn win. Na-na.